Hi, everybody. Um, I have been postponing doing a video on what's going on in the Middle East for days now because I haven't been able to figure out how to speak about it, what to say about it. I haven't been able to settle my soul. <clears throat> and then this morning, I heard a rabbi speaking. He was being interviewed, and he said, what happened a week ago was unthinkable. And that word caught my attention. And I thought, it's exactly right. It is unthinkable. It's, that's the era that we're living in now. We're living in the era of the unthinkable, the unimaginable, the impossible. We have crossed a Rubicon. We have crossed a Rubicon. And um, I think that, that it, it's two things. One is it's, it's challenging us to start thinking in ways we haven't been able to, which offers as much hope as it does obstacles. It's always an obstacle course. I saw this interview with um, an Israeli soldier, and the reporter said, how did you let this happen? How could this happen? He said, we, we were not prepared for this. But that's changed now. Now the army's back, as it were. He said, we didn't think this was possible. There it is, the unthinkable. They didn't think that they could be, Israel could be attacked like this. Why not? Why didn't you think about the unthinkable? Why not? What parameters are thinking so that we only go so far? We go to our safe zone. And that's as far as we'll allow our thinking and our imagination to go. We don't consider. But what if? But what if? Right? Europe didn't think there'd be another war after World War II. It was unthinkable that a nation would dare invade another nation and start this incredible war. And yet here we are. And so now we, and I think it is, for me, the, my list of what's unthinkable is so long. <clears throat> it's unthinkable to me that we could have a House of Representatives without a leader for so long in the midst of all of these things happening in our world, and yet it is, that our own nation could come to such a disastrous, constant war within its own ranks. And yet isn't that where this world is? It is a world of conflict. It is a world of endless, endless conflict. And honestly, if I, if you, what is it that everybody wants? What is it that is generating this constant, constant conflict? And it's really almost unthinkable that we can find ways through this. And so we go back and think about ways that we've turned to in the past, war. We'll just kill the people that, that are, are annoying us. We'll just destroy them. The language gets more destructive, certainly in Congress. The language gets more destructive. And then when you actually are in the battlefield, the decision will just kill Hamas. We'll just wipe them out. It's like at the end of World War II when everyone thought the Nazis were done. They weren't done. You can't kill an ideology. You cannot kill an ideology. You can kill the people who at the time supported that ideology, but you can't kill it. It just makes its way somewhere else. And where did it go? It, go, it went into our Congress. It went into, into the, the white nationalists here. It, you, you can't kill this, these ideas that people have that they are entitled or they're they're protected because they didn't have enough. 
what's unthinkable is how the human condition can resolve what is an explosion of resentments and wounds and just causes and unjust causes where both sides are right and both sides are wrong where where both sides have valid points of view and totally self-serving ones the truth is the the human community doesn't have the psychic or spiritual resources to actually absorb all the wounds that we have. We just don't. We don't have it. And, and think about what it takes to heal something in you. Think about what it takes. And think about all that's required to get you from one stage of grief or pain into a, a place where you feel like, okay, I can keep going again. Think of all the, the issues that put you in grief or, or generate that kind of pain and what it takes. You need a witness. You need someone to witness your wounds. You need someone to validate. The witness serves in that role. And then what do you need? That comes the big next. Do you need vengeance? Do you need justice? What does that look like to you? The human journey is built on this trajectory that in order for me to feel better, in order for me to feel better, to get over woundedness, I must have justice according to what I feel just is. It is unthinkable that I can move forward without that. Now, we have a planet of people feeling this way. You know, <coughs> excuse me, one of the images I, I, I use in my workshops is an image of a 12-story building, just, just the shell, the square, and then lines, each one indicating a floor. And I use that because it's so incredibly useful. And I tell my students, as I'm telling you now, to imagine that you are that building, that when you're born, you're the building. And certain things are locked into place, and that forms the frame of the building, so it can't be moved, it can't be changed. So I was born in Chicago. That's part of the frame of my building. I was born to a Polish-Austrian Catholic family. It's locked in. I... I I was born in December, locked in. I mean, there are things that form, and this becomes the first floor of your building. So from our first floor, when we look out the window, we have the most limited view. From the time our building is built, our, our pieces are locked in that cannot be changed. Then the journey of life is what floor do you want to see your life from? What floor do you want to think from? How much data do you want to include into yourself as a way of processing the incredible obstacles that is the journey of life, that make up the journey of life? The journey, the obstacles that are, that comprise the journey of life. 